Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the next episode of the GNA podcast. I am sick of your shit, Onibaba, and I'm here to take you out, Drewby Doo. And I'm the guy who will piss on your face on command, Silver Oni. I really was trying to go. There, <laughs> I couldn't so think of anything easy. else. <laughs> it's too easy. I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> Guys, welcome to the GNA podcast where we talk about all things anime the good, the bad, and the weave. How are you doing tonight, Oni? I am doing tired, but well. I. It's been a long weekend. I have no, I have no heat in my house. Mm. <laughs> Lots of stuff is happening. I'm just like, you know what? I'm just here. I'm just here trying to exist. Mm. You know? Story just... of our lives. Yes, but we... But you know what helps me exist anime? Mm-hmm. That's, that's why we do what we do, the way we do it. And... Yeah, I can't think of a cool way to end that statement. So I'm just going to move on into our first segment, which is This Week in Anime. Um, really had to scrape the bottom of the barrel uh, this week. Not much news that, well, it was a there was dead news. Week. There was nothing interesting. Yeah, nothing too interesting. Like, the, besides the old head of GNAC. Or that that anime company, Genex, Jernex, something next. Mm-hmm. He's he. I think he got sentenced or something. Wait for what? Oh, he like did something lewd to like an idol a few years ago, and then he got like arrested. I think now he's either mm, been arraigned that, or he's. That been seems like to. pretty juicy news, but okay. It's juicy. It's like, I just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't really want to linger on that and just be like, "Yay, let's talk about the awful things that this guy did." Ugh, like, no, fuck him. Um, <laughs> instead, I'm briefly going to tell y'all that, uh, uh, according to the Anime News Network, the second fake Grand Order anime film's trailer has been streamed. It is up for your consumption. It's about a minute long. Uh, it's very, very pretty, as you can imagine. Uh, if you love Camelot, get ready. Everything looks nice. And everyone looks sexy, so look forward to that. But yeah, that, that's it. Like, it's literally just like, hey, the trailer's out, and it looks good. Like, um, I, had, I heard mixed reviews about the first one, so hopefully the second one is better. But then again, mm-hmm. like, I feel like Camelot's one of those chapters that started slow, and then it became better as it went on, so maybe it's yeah. just a, a slow thing. Yeah. I I uh excuse me. Yeah, I, I feel like the second half's gonna be bomb. So yeah. Looking forward to that indeed. I I need to watch the first I need to find and watch the first one. I don't think it's subbed yet. Come on guys <laughs> who I don't pay, get to it. Yeah, get to that <laughs> subbing. Got to that free subbing. Well, free for me. Um, in my news, uh, also pretty light news. Basically, the Disgaea RPG, which is the uh, mobile gotcha game, is coming to America, or it's getting a Western release uh, in spring 2021. So, yay! If you if you like Disgaea and you want to play it on mobile and you like throwing money in the gotcha, this <laughs> is for you, and that that definitely describes me. Although, from what I've seen of the gameplay of it, not too hot on it. It looks like a, um, it's, it's literally called Disgaea RPG, and it is, it's not like a tactical RPG. Like, you would think, because it's Disgaea, they would just make the Disgaea game on mobile, because the game's already pretty simplistic and fun. Yeah. But this is just a straight up, like, turn-based RPG, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. Hmm. Kind of weird with a Disgaea setting. So I don't it, know. How it's just it strictly turn based. Yeah, it's it's like uh, it's actually kind of like FGO where it's like you have your ca- like five characters that you pick, and then they can all do different attacks, and you clear three waves of enemies to get to the next wave. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I saw some very basic like beta gameplays. So maybe maybe they juiced it up after that or something. I don't know, but it doesn't uh, automatically grab me. Especially since Disgaea 6 is also coming out next year, so... 
I might just go with that. Hmm. Hmm. Right. Well, y'all, that was our very uh, <laughs> riveting and thick news segment. <laughs> yeah, juicy news segment. Very juicy. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's move on to actual course. The weekly reviews, starting off with, of course, my anime of the week. Of course. Golden Kamui, episode 11? Yes. The penultimate episode. episode. Season 3, episode 11. Yeah, no, I mean, how could it not be? It was just literally what I wanted from Golden Kamui all along. It's so good. There were so many good shows. I don't know if this is episode of the week for me, because there's so many good episodes this week. This is... is yeah, like I, under- I kind of understand how you feel when you're like, I can't choose. But this was maybe because I was just looking forward to this one so much, mm-hmm. and yeah, I just did it. It was like, here you go. This is what you wanted. I was like, this is what I wanted. Thank you. It had action, com- comedy. Um, basically, it had the the gang reunited, like essentially, yeah, TLDR. The gang reunited, and in a very, like, the amount of emotions that it went through, like, you went from, um, yep. from, like, tense fear from, um, Ogata pointing his gun at, uh, Asleepa to, like, the utter shock of her expression when she shot him, when she shot him with an arrow. In the eye. And then it just ends with an actual, literal, like, slapstick comedy scene after the yes. tearful reunion. Yeah, the tearful <laughs> reunion. They're like, oh, wait, my eyelid's stuck. And she, like, she's just peeing on them. <laughs> she's just peeing on them. <laughs> like, literally, in most cases, she's actually peeing on a nine-year-old girl like that. <laughs> in most anime, I'd be like, ew, what the fuck? Like, this is... Ugh. No, canceled. <laughs> but you know, it's 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 <clears throat> going <commonly. laughs> it, it it was probably the funniest scene I think in the entire show, <laughs> just because of how. <laughs> first off, they foreshadowed this by having him pee on the other dude. The other like, yeah, like a few episodes. This is not ago. the first time. This is not the first time people are getting peed on out here. This is not yes. the first cameo. By I think what <laughs> really just took me out was the fact that they did like the whole kind of like imagery that's like implying like oh yes he's peeing and then mm-hmm. they're all saved everything's going back together and then it just cuts to him peeing on them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when he, he started peeing on um on uh what's his name uh Sugimoto. Sugimoto, and he's like oh you crying you're like nah man it's just your piss <laughs> yeah it's just your pee i was like uh, what <laughs> only in golden kim movie can you write that line <laughs> This show, this show is so gross. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but we also got a lot of actual like shit that happened this episode because holy shit, Every, everything, yeah, every, <laughs> literally it all came crum- crumbling down. The two groups more or less reunited with each other, mm-hmm. and you know, Simona's kind of uh, mad that you know, Kidoranke and Ogata conspired to have him killed, so mm-hmm. he's. Like, I still remember when Sugimoto, like, had a feral facial expression. Like, he literally looked like a demon. Yeah, his face was, like, about to explode. It was so red and, like, puffy yeah. and red-eyed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of eyes, that, uh, that I see, uh... Oh, that... Which one? <laughs> the one where Ogata gets shot in the eye and Sugimoto sucks out the blood. Oh, yeah. And then... I love even at that moment, all like his anger, his bloodlust, just it just falls to the wayside because he's like, "Wait, I need to stop Asirpa from being a killer." <laughs> at so first, I, I, thought he, I thought he was gonna kill Ogata himself, so he could just be like, "Look, I killed him. You didn't kill him." <laughs> yeah, because he oh, pulled out the knife. knife, right? Yeah, I thought he was just gonna push him down and like slit his throat with the knife. <laughs> yeah, did he cut his eye open? Is that what that? Happened? Yeah, like he like carved out his eye and like. I guess sucked out the poison that's in the arrow. So that's survival tactics 101. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Um Yeah, that was that was a bit that was a bit cray cray. Uh let's see the thought of uh, he didn't really knighted. 
And then the fight between Kiranke, well, there's a multiple fight between a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Like the fight between uh, shit was um Tanigaki and yeah Kiranke and Kiranke, and then before that, the um Kiranke and uh, Kiranke, Koito and Tanigaki mm-hmm. when they fought the bandits, I would just came out of nowhere. Yeah, random bandit ambush. Random ass bandit. <laughs> Imagine getting ambushed by bandits in like the fucking polar ice caps. <laughs> that like, sucks. Excuse, I'd be like, give us your, give us your clothes, and <laughs> I'm like, nah, you can just kill me. Like, I'd, I'd rather just you kill me than freeze to death. Mm-hmm. Like, we can fight. <laughs> <laughs> we can throw hands. We can fight. Um, but yeah, also the fight between Kuroranke and Tani- Tanigaki. Just, oh, just so much, I don't know. I was actually expecting this to be a slower episode. I <laughs> I'm just, I was shocked by how much happened. I really did like the um, the interaction that Asipa and Ogata had where he was like trying to oh, like, yeah. manipulate her. And he, oh, kept, yeah. he wouldn't shut the fuck up. First rule mm-hmm. of lying is be vague. Don't. A lie uh, in yes. such specific specific. Do not. <laughs> don't. Yeah, I was like, stop talking. Do you say what you want to eat? You should have said no. Yeah, no. <laughs> How many last words did he have, Ogata? Damn. Stop giving him last words, Ogata. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It just. I sleep with first, like, of, <laughs> first of all, Ogata really. Tr- first of all, Ogata, like, you were never going to succeed with the Sirpa. You were never that close. She mm. did not trust you like that. Yeah, you fucked up. Mm-hmm. And you kind of just made it clear why she shouldn't trust you, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, man. But, yeah. And then, as you mentioned eyes a few minutes ago, that eye shot, when she was like, no, I'm not gonna kill you. Oh, yeah. And he was just like, oh, I'm triggered. You're not a murderer like me. You must die? <laughs> I think that's his thing. He wants everyone to be, like, crazy like, murderers. Yeah, they want, he wants everyone to have that side of him that okay with murder. Mm-hmm. Cause if they if they're absolved from killing and stuff, like that's just like oh, then the, what does that make me? And yeah. he can't think about that, <laughs> so he just kills everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, didn't work out too well for him this time. Yeah, I can't wait to see what we're gonna end up with in the last episode. I feel like oh god is gonna oh obviously I feel like oh god is gonna survive. Um, um, Kiranke, yeah. I'm thinking is gonna die. Yeah, I really would be. Sh- I mean, I would. I would. I wouldn't like watch. They're like, oh yes, I got stabbed in the chest, but mm-hmm. I had many layers. <laughs> yeah, I had multiple stuff. layers. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, you do need to dress warmly. Also, Sophia wasn't in this episode, which makes me think she's gonna pop out next episode. Mm-hmm. To do some shit like you're hurting my bro, Kuranke, and then drop kick the shit. <laughs> you just drop kick from the sky. <laughs> no, that's, no, the last fight is actually just Sugimoto versus Sophia. Mm-hmm. Final fight, go. Mm-hmm. I have my money on Sophia. Just saying. Yeah, just, <laughs> I think she's canonically the strongest person in the show. <laughs> <laughs> she took out a tiger. Uh, all right. Great episode. Mm-hmm. Love. Good to see that Golden Kamui is. It brought. It brought. It brought me back <clears> to why I loved it so much in the first place. Same. All right. Let's move on to Tony Kaku Kawaii episode twelve, the last episode, I believe. Yep. This was the final episode. Although they did announce an OVA next year. Hmm. So. I would say this ending is like extremely average. But yeah, it, well, I mean, it went with the whole fireworks cliche. It was like, we're gonna do fireworks. I'm like, oh, that's exactly. super tropey. Although, I did like that it was a bit more, uh... It was a bit more, um... What's the word I'm looking for? Spicy. Like, we we got an almost... An almost HC. <laughs> oh my god! You missed the scene where they're like, oh my god, we're kissing in the bed. He's like, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> he got down to her chest. <laughs> oh, I like, lo- I love Nasa because he's so relatable. <laughs> I don't blame him. Yeah, I mean, 
And that's cool. That's what, that's what I like about this anime. It's like, they're not like, oh, I'm an anime character who has no sexual drive. Yeah. I just find my wife cute. No, he, he clearly has an objective here. Yeah. And I like how flustered she gets, too. Like, she gets so fun. Even aside from that almost sex scene, but the, uh, where she had the yukata on, and he, first off, when he's putting on the yukata, he's like, can I just, can I watch you change? <laughs> can I just... Oh, that's such a you? weird... That was like a, a weird, weird way to like bring it up. I think what you're trying to say was like, "Hey, can we get to that point where you're like, like shy about us changing from each other?" Because well, ultimately, a man and credit. I think he, um, I think he was just horny and wanted to see her naked. I mean, no, I'm not saying that's incorrect. I'm mm-hmm. saying both of those things. Mm-hmm. I think both those things are true. I think he did just want to see her with her clothes off, but then he was like, "Yeah, why are we?" Watching each like, why are we changing behind each other's backs when we're married? Mm-hmm. That is true. They need mm-hmm. to get more comfortable with actually like, in changing in front of each other. Now, but that's what I like about the show because they actually do make some progress. Like this episode, uh, she washed him while he had his shirt off and everything. I feel like that would be unthinkable in the first few episodes of the show. So even though it's like mm-hmm. a very small progress, they do kind of yeah. make. I mean, I mean, she she could have washed the other half, but hmm. well, she almost did. And then he was like, well, "What was the other way?" And she was like, "Oh my god, it's so embarrassing." But I'm but I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine though. But please. Um, but yeah, no, the ending itself was just kind of meh. The the first half was better than the second half. Like, I wasn't a big fan of the whole festival thing. Um, agreed. Yeah, that one season, that one scene that was funny where he tries catching the fish, and the fish just mm-hmm. says, yeet, and <laughs> destroys his net. Mm-hmm. But yeah, outside of that, no, it was very much whatever. Like, it was, it was like, we're husband and wife, and we love each other. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if it's getting a second season, because they confirmed the OVA, and it kind of left off in a... I get that feeling where it's like they know they're trying to make a second season, so they kind of left it very vague and open-ended. Like, this could yeah. easily just go into a second season. Like, and not It could. Good. I hope it does. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's, it's very entertaining. Um, Are you ready for a score? Yes. You're first. I went first with Fire Force. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. Mm-hmm. No, I'll, give this, I'll give this anime an 8. Then eight. Very nice. Very, yep, very, so- very solid. Like, I think, I feel like before I would have given it a 7.5, because I'm just like, it's, they're doing some thing, mm-hmm. I guess. But then they started going in direction. They started exploring the characters that are Nasa and, Nasa and Tsukasa. Mm-hmm. And they're very... They're very... How do I say this? They feel like characters. They feel like people. Yeah. They feel like people with quirk and and habit. Like they developed all those things about these two characters, and then they gave a great supporting cast. Yeah, the That's cast some really, really got funny got Better as the show went on, the supporting cast. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Mm, I was gonna give it a seven point five. But I think you pushed me to an eight. Uh, yeah, as far as, like, just, like, slice of life anime go, I feel like this one, at least it was consistent. Um, yeah. The premise was kind of original, because usually there's not any progress. In, like, it's hard to find a show, an anime that covers, like, marital, li- marital life. So I think it gets points for, like, originality. Um, and it was just a fun, interesting, cute little show. I think it, it gave me what I wanted, which is just seeing a cute couple being cute with the occasional bit of fan service and the occasional laugh so it did its job and it did it well and i would watch a season two agreed i'm i'm i had my doubts about this anime from like the jump but you know i'm, I'm glad we i'm pretty content that we stuck with it Same. like it, this is this is people in the anime that like during the lineup i'd be like all right, let's get this over with. Let's get this out of the way. And now I'm just like, oh, okay, come on, Tony Kaku Kawaii. Listen, what, with, do you, what do you have? With Higarashi and Kamisama and all that shit in our lineup, I need a palate cleanser like Tony Kaku Kawaii. Understandable. <laughs> um, yeah, good, good anime. 
all the same. Mm-hmm. Now, that being said, let us move on to Don Machi, season three, episode 12. Also, the finale. And my episode of the week. <laughs> Someone has to stand for Don Machi. My Don Machi oh, bias is in full. Oh, man. It really is. <laughs> oh, Cause, please. No, because you know outside of it. It's, well, it's sharing it's, it's, it. it's sharing half of an episode of the week with something else. But we'll no, get to that okay. when we get to it. Um, <laughs> mm. Listen, I have to stand for this. You always ask for good fight scenes and shit. It does. Machi. This was a good fight. I will give it to them. <laughs> it was a good fight scene. It was great seeing Bell get fucking thrown around. Molly Watt. <laughs> also, I'm like, does is he normally used to get his ass beat like he this? Gets like, his ass beat. like no, this is like <laughs> Dragon the, Ball Z. He's the anti Kirito. <laughs> he got. But, like, he's getting, like, I'm saying, can he usually sustain this much damage? That's what I'm asking. Oh, I don't know. His endurance is, I guess so. He does get beat a bit. This is the most he's ever gotten Okay, like, I don't know what Usually it's just, like, I get punched and kicked a few times, and then, uh, He got thrown. Yeah, this turned into This dude got, like, ran, ran through, like, multiple (laughs) houses. This was, like, Goku showed up and fucking turned Super Saiyan and fought in the battle. (laughs) Literally exactly. threw him through houses. Throw him <laughs> high up in the sky. Seismic tossed him and shit. <laughs> through the ground into the sewer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm shocked Bell is like alive. alive. <laughs> <laughs> he got so beat up. It was fun to watch though. Um I'm glad that it connected back to that original Minotaur fight from season one. I guess this Minotaur is like a his reincarnated form or like mm-hmm. You know, it has to be, yeah. Or whatever. So that's interesting. Um, I like Freya just get her 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 one cameo for the season, like she always does. She just shows up at the end of the season to do her for no reason bad bitch shit, and like I'm still a bad bitch. Bye and leave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I, I just I just don't understand. Like, what was her purpose besides being like I'm here to like stop Loki from or Loki Hermes from uh. Implementing his crazy plan and letting all the monsters escape. That's why she had all those guards stopping, uh, like eyes and them. No, I, I guess she was there to stop Hermes, but why was she there to stop Hermes? Like, oh, I guess she just wants Bell to do his own thing. I think, yeah. I think from what I've gathered, Hermes wants Bell to like be the traditional hero who like fights for humanity and kills yeah. these monsters. And work for the gods, and then Freya's like, nah, fuck the gods, even though I'm a god. I want Bell to do his own thing and be his own hero. But in a very twisted, perverted way, somehow. Somehow. <laughs> so, you know, she's just doing her own thing. I'm sure I'm sure we'll see some do do her doing something in in like season eight or something. Um, yeah, that, that was that was interesting. I'm glad everyone survived. I'm glad that we, they they found a good balance between making all the monsters survive, but still making Hermes look like an absolute madman, crazy person. So I didn't feel like it was a cop out because this plan was yeah. still pretty violent towards the monsters. Yeah, it wasn't like I'm going to kill them. It was like, hey, you guys need to sacrifice yourselves. Mm, sacrifice yourselves for the greater good. Yeah. So Val can be, you know, redeemed. I am curious to see how that uh, is going to, like, transpire going forward. Like, because he just shows up at the end like, hi, what is up, Hestia? And she drop kicks him. So uh-huh. I don't know if, like, going forward, they're going to be, like, antagonistic toward each other. Or they're just going to be like, uh, let's let bygones be bygones and pretend that never happened. I feel like they, either, either one could happen because it's Don Machi. Yeah. I'd like it more if they weren't friends, though. Or at least if, if Hestia was very suspect of him going forward. Yes, but she should she, be. She definitely honestly. should be. So yeah, no, I enjoyed it. I think it was a good season finale. Uh, much better than season two. Hmm. I think it deserves it. Alright, so are we rating it? Much. Yeah, sure. Um, 8.5. I think it was solid. I think it was very solid. Like I said, better than season two. The I liked the action scenes. The plot was actually interesting. The new characters were good. I liked the monsters. I like Weenie. Um 
I think it was a bit slow at certain episodes where it was just like doing build up and stuff. And there was a couple of like consistency issues in here and there. And a couple of like plot convenience points like, oh, we're not going to have these characters fight because that would be so lopsided. Let's just pretend blah, 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 blah. So it loses points for that. But I think overall, this is probably the best season. So 8.5. Mm. Also, didn't have that much eyes, so. Oh yeah, that is a plus. Um, I'm going to give this one an eight, mm-hmm. and why I'm giving it an eight is what? That's generous for you, considering it's top notchy. <laughs> well, yeah, but honestly, it kind of has the same impression that uh, Tony Kaku Kawaii did. First, I was like, eh. But then it got... Then the premise became super interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, And... Yeah, am I... Like, (laughs) I'm not expecting Attack on Titan greatness. But... How did this compare to Attack on Titan? (laughs) (laughs) It was... No, it, it, it was... It was good, not mm-hmm. great, but it was it was very good. As the episodes came on, I came more like, you know, I had that feeling of being invested. Yeah, it's like what's happening, which is I do not have when I watch this anime normally. So that felt really good. Um, yeah, like Oni said, there were you know the obvious weaknesses I expect from Don Machi, mm-hmm. things that were completely different for plot, ice. Uh, Lily. Uh, no, I'm just kidding about Lily. Yeah, you got her. Lily's precious, and she did nothing all season. Yeah, she no, nah, she was only yeah, she was only a bitch for like half, for like the first half. Mm-hmm. When when she stopped hating on the Zenos. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it just it just it it gets the A because it's just a lot of stuff that I just look at as an anime. As as a narrative, they just do things that just don't make sense to me still. So to this, to this day, <laughs> I they think... don't like the interjection, the random interjection of Freya last second. Ice just standing there being ice. Um, I feel like there's others that I, I'm just not thinking of. I think if Don oh had... oh oh the ret- the retcon when um. What's her face died. Oh, that Konko so died. I still think that was a good scene, but okay. Mm. Understandable. I think if they had like a better studio, like I like JC staff, but they're not necessarily like an elite studio. I think if they had a better studio and like a better director who can pace things better, it could potentially be one of those like nine, like a really, really good shonen. But it just like just falls short of that. Yeah. It's really interesting that you said, like, oh, the if you have a director or production series. I'm like, honestly, yeah, I mean, for me, well, I mean, honestly, for me, it's just, it's, it's just a story. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but the story, the story, story the story could be helped if your director like knew how to include certain bits uh, and pieces. Like, it's I'm like, sure they I can't. It's, yeah, an, it's can't a light novel help. adaptation. I'm sure they skipped a whole bunch of like that Freya yeah. thing. I'm sure they skipped a bunch of shit. You know, you're you're right. Freya you're right. The, the story story's probably fine. It's yeah. It's definitely how they they adapt turn it. it. Yeah, they adapt it. Um, so you know, I actually take that back. You're you are correct. That yes. Let me direct it. Come on, do it, JC staff. Give me, give me the like, budget. No, but I will. <laughs> I, I will if you give me the director's job. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love Don Machi. Give it to me. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll get on the phone with JC staff right away. Thank you. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> <laughs> but until then, let us move on to Higarashi no Naku Koroni Go. Episode 12. Hmm. So, um, yeah, I, God, because I'm going to say something negative about the show, <laughs> Um, I feel like, I think I had a similar complaint to mm-hmm. last week yet again, which was nothing happened. Yeah. Just like last episode, just like the last episode is like, we're going to the Chopper Services. 
we got turned away. Doshio. Like, and that's it. And that was it. The only thing that was slightly more exciting is <laughs> it just it's just all the kids that are cagey just shitting on the old people for like 20 yeah. minutes. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Oh man, Rena's <laughs> passive aggressive like cheekiness. Oh, I loved it. But she was like reading, oh look at this cute sign you have up that says some bullshit. I guess you don't live by your principles, huh? Yeah, I'd be like, wow, look at this sign. Mm-hmm. I guess you're a I bunch guess of you, frauds. I guess you're a bunch of pussies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pussy Crazy. <laughs> yeah, and then Cage, and then when they were like resolved to go back in and talk to them, he's like, yeah, there's some old tatted like Katsumi <laughs> on the floor. Let's get rid of them. Let's get rid of them all. And I'm like, wait, wait okay, just be sure. This means we're going to like talk to them. We're not going to just murder the whole council, right? <laughs> like, it's not that kind of arc, is it? <laughs> Keiichi, like, literally went so hard. He was like, not even like your tradition. Like, I'm used to like the traditional Japanese idea of being rude, where it's just like, oh, he didn't call me son at the end, or he was like, I don't know, I had his shoes on. No, Keiichi was like, I'm going to fucking stab you to death, you stupid old bitch. <laughs> I'm like, God damn. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to fucking, he's not, he learned that I'm going to fucking kill you and everyone else. He, that's not even an exaggeration. Those are quotes. I think those are actual quotes. Those are legit quotes. Either that or the summer had a fa- like a fun afternoon just going crazy with the subs. I don't know, but that's what I read. Um, but yeah, no, Keiichi was going, he was threatening lives and she's like, he, he was being reckless. Considering that, Oh, was it no Ishii there? Can he not arrest Keiichi for making threats to an old woman? No, I don't think he was there for oh, that. He, wasn't there he was for there the, for oh, the no student there. council. No one where there. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's he no thoughts were made at that point. He mm-hmm. was just saying that you're all a bunch of pussies. It's like That's yeah. that's different. That's not outright oh, good, uh because if Keiichi was there I mean if uh Oishi was there, Keiji would have been in the fucking Oh yeah, I did this. Car. It's actually in this um in 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 this timeline. Mm-hmm. Oishi would guy been like, Oh, time to arrest and or murder you. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure Shion was just standing off screen like <laughs> I was gonna say jerking literally, off. Literally like, orgasming to, to literally fingering herself yeah. to oblivion. Oh yes, KG, tell my grandma you're gonna kill her some more. Dump her oh, body god. in the well. Take the Shinozaki head, yes. <laughs> Kill me on too. <laughs> yes, oh Keiichi, now kill, now kill me on. <laughs> yes, now kill me on. on and then next, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now Shion was getting off to that whole scene. Um, yeah. But yeah, the fun aside, this show was, like you said, this episode was so slow. It re- I really feel it when the arc is five episodes instead of four episodes. Like, the pacing yeah. is just, like, oh, at least the other arcs had stuff going on. Like, for for the Reyna arc, um, even though nothing happened until the last episode, every episode had, like, a little stinger moment where it'd be like, oh, shit, Reyna looks creepy. Or, oh, shit, uh, Reyna has a hatchet. And she's, like, has said Usoda. And in the, <laughs> in the, in the same thing happened in the last arc with Mion and Xi'an, where it was, like, little gotcha moments. This arc has none of those. It's just them yeah. going back and forth between and, the... and and the occasional Sotoko freaking out. Yeah, just Sotoko freaking out, and then like the past two episodes have just been, let's go to Child Protective Services. Oh, they didn't take our case. Let's go back. Oh, they didn't take our case. Let's go see the mirror. I feel like I'm watching a documentary about how to deal with Child Protective Services. So I, I feel like this arc could have definitely been four episodes. It didn't need to be five episodes, and you could have squeezed both of these episodes into one episode, you know? Agreed. Yeah, this all could have been summed up in one episode. Like, we went, didn't work. One more people, didn't work. One more people, didn't work. Yelled at people. End of episode. Like, if they just did, they went to the Child Protective Services and they met with the person, the person was like, no, fuck off. They could have, I feel like they could have made it into, like, a montage. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, it shows, like, a small them going, then... KT in the montage is rallying up the class and mm-hmm. the teacher. They go, it doesn't work. Rally up people, go on with everywhere. Be like, oh my god, help Satoko, help Satoko, help Satoko. Music's playing in the background. And mm-hmm. then they'll go up for the last time, doesn't work. And then we start the rest of the episode. Yeah, and then that could just be like the council, like I'm going to see 
oh Onibaba and all that stuff. That would yeah. that would have been a lot much better. Instead of making it two whole ass episodes. Yeah. That it's said, nice. yeah. my my theory is that Stoko's dead. That's my that's my crackpot theory for this arc. I think Tepe already killed her. And they're gonna find that out and it's gonna drive them all to kill Tepe. And then that's gonna be the dead end. Oh my God, I didn't even think about that because we haven't seen her. Yeah, we haven't seen her in like two episodes or like an episode and a half. Shit. <laughs> oh, I don't want to think about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, well, think, I think she might be already dead. So that's my theory. Let's see if it happens next week. Next week should be the final episode for this arc. Well, that's fun. Let's move on to <laughs> Kamisama Ninatahi, episode 11. Uh, I'm sure this is just speaking so of, fun. Speaking yeah. of fun, <laughs> so we get to watch Yota? Is this Yota? Yeah, Yota struggle mm-hmm. to um reconnect with Hina. And, you know, that in itself kind of suck like watching just how like mentally scarred she is like as they go through like the her whole schedule where it's just her being like you know almost unresponsive mm-hmm. unless she knows a person can't really talk much um can barely walk or stand yeah um which would I mean so that itself was like sad enough but then for some reason, this this bitch with her own issues. Oh God! Thank is you like, for not standing up for her. I thought you were gonna stand up for her. No, it's like okay, yes, I get, I understand why, but it's like from day one, she was very like, it lo- ugh, towards mm-hmm. Yoda for like no reason. Like Yoda's clearly trying because this means something to him. And you're not giving anything, and she was just being very Ugh, the yeah. entire time, and I wasn't wasn't a huge fan of that at all. But anyways, th- that that bitch, she's like, oh, so yeah, even though I should probably encourage you to like bond with her because you clearly know her. Yeah, that could have been the machine you were friends with. Like, yeah, I don't understand that argument. Like, you sure I wasn't just the machine? Like, why would you say that? It's so fucking dumb and mean. That exactly. <laughs> like, one doesn't make any sense. But unfortunately, yeah. he's like fifty. Fortunately, he's a teenager, mm-hmm. so I don't blame him for not having like the introspect. Like, the moment she said that, I'm like, I don't think machines can fucking emote. That's not. That is literally yeah. a thing that machines can't do. <laughs> yeah, like she's not like. I mean, I understand what they're saying. Like, I feel like you can, you can program a machine to give like certain response. To mm-hmm. certain things, and it's like I feel like you could, you if they wanted to, but I don't think this is that kind of yeah, anime. Exactly, it's going to like dive into like the consciousness of like AI. Mm-hmm. I don't think, I don't think this is that anime. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I understand, I understand where she's coming from, but even then, it's like, nah, that's Hina. Like, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's a weird attack to go after him. Exactly, before. especially because you, especially because you don't. You didn't know her before. Yeah. Like, if you knew her before, and she was like, beep boop, beep boop, beep boop, then I would understand. But that's not... That just wasn't the case. So it's like, ah, you're being really harsh to him. And I felt... Oh, I felt so bad. I did too. Because it's like... Like, think about that while, you know, you're on a two-week time crunch. Or at least he was until he got caught. Yeah, yeah. I have to say though, like, for as all right, I, I have a weird relationship with this episode because I like it in terms of like I I felt bad for Hina and I, like it, it engaged me and I felt all the emotions I had to feel, but like I was saying with um, someone else uh, on our last comment section, the last video, it feels like this show and he mentioned it was. Um, like it's it, it feels inorganic where it just like makes me want like it's trying to force me to feel these feelings, you know like it's setting up all these situations because it knows like this is how you're going to respond to this and I want you to be sad 
I don't know, it just feels like forced sadness on me. Where I didn't feel that with Clannad or Angel Beats. I felt like, oh, this is genuinely sad. And I don't know how, like, you get what I mean? I feel like I can interpret it, interpret what you're saying in a different way. For me, mm-hmm. I think for me, it's just like, like, I can't tell whether or not that it's like a manufacturing, trying to manufacture emotions, but th- I will say there was, like, yeah, like, this is a scene that's making me sad. I'm like, oh, these are really sad realities, but like, you know, the impact, it's still not the same impact of the other two anime you mentioned. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's not, it's not there. And I think one of the reasons why is it's only 12 episodes. I mean, uh, Angel Beats is also 12 episodes. Yeah, so. I think it's, I think it's a matter of the build up. Like, cause Angel Beats and Clint Ad, like, even though they had their funny moments, there was always like, there was always like these down times where they would have an episode that was sad or there were moments that were sad and they foreshadowed yeah. sad things. Whereas with this show, it kind of just like all is happening at once. And it's kind of, it just feels like, oh, you like Hina and how active and fun and cool she is? Well, now she's going to be in a, like, a a, a crippled state. And, like, this is something I would, if somebody came to me, like, write something sad, this is probably what I would write. All right, well, hyper, cool, fun child becomes, uh, you know, disabled and is in the hospital when you have to take care of her and treat her and all, like, it just feels manufactured. I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I feel I'm like they could have like, led up to it better a bit instead of just. I think, I think, I think this anime in particular needed 24 episodes. Yeah, I think I this needed 24 that. episodes. I can like, see. Yeah, that. but you know, it's a very slice of life. It needed 24 because for a while it just was like some plot then like slice life slice life slice 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 and now just a hardcore shift back to plot and mm. it just yeah like you said it just it feels very like what a, oh, oh okay it, it loses that impact mm-hmm. like thinking back now you could think like all those episodes that we had that were just slice of life fun things, like the mm. Mahjong episode and the ramen episode and the movie episode. Like, oh, could you have not used those episodes to maybe like build up a little bit of this? Just a wee bit. Mm-hmm. Just a wee bit. So yeah, it just feels weird. I still like it, but it just feels off. Compared yeah, to it's it's, it's yeah, it's just it's just not as impactful. That's it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that, uh, nope, this is the wrong notes. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's it. Yeah, that's all I have to say. All right, cool. Let's move on to uh, Shike Witches, Road to Berlin, episode 11. Uh, pretty good episode. I'm... I'm conflicted on how I feel about, um, on one hand, I'm happier that it's focusing on the actual plot and not the plot, in air quotes. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, I like that the story's actually progressing and there's an actual story and they're doing things with the lore. Like, they have the tanks and the new tank and the mega tank and they're actually doing, like, army stuff where they're going in different squadrons with different assignments, and they have objectives and missions, and they're working together to coordinate and using cover. Like, it it feels like I'm watching a military anime. Like, it feels like, uh, I'm not going to go crazy and call it Code Geass, but it kind of felt like like watching a Lelouch fight in Code Geass or something. But on a Mm -hmm. much, 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 much smaller scale, I'm just saying it had that, like all out war type of feeling to it. Okay. Which I appreciated. But I missed a fan service. They had one fan service moment. Yeah. No, they're just one. <laughs> it was a good one though. But yeah, I missed a fan service. Yeah, unfortunately I agree with Oni's well, I wouldn't even call call Kogias I because at least Kogias had like I don't know. Strategy. I mean, there's like baby strategy here. 
<laughs> yes, right, elementary. Yes, as this in, is this is how I play. This uh, is fucking. This is like. This is like. Girl, in my mind, I convert. I'd convert to like girls and Panzer with just no like, girls and Panzer is better strategy. <laughs> at least they sometimes think of tactics other than like throw a big tank at machines. More tank. More, more, more tank. <laughs> also, strike witch. <laughs> also, strike witch. We need more strike witch and more tank. <laughs> Big tank. And more tank. <laughs> bigger, bigger tank, more strike with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, it's kind of like baby's first yeah. strategy. And it's like, and it, no, nothing really, it's like, like stuff happened, but it's just like nothing amazing. Like, we, I just saw a bunch of shots of like the girls just shooting at a bunch of the little things all the time. Yeah. Um, it's a fake sense of stuff happening. St- stuff happened on screen, and there were effects, but nothing actually changed in the nothing. In the story. They all, I said they got sealed in <laughs> in a bubble. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. It was literally it. <laughs> that version started without me Fuji, and they got stuck in a bubble. Yeah, it's it's one and of those Hattori, episodes. And Hattori was like, "Oh my." God. God no! It's, it's all my, my fault. fault. And I'm like, man, I don't care. Get over. I it. mean, <laughs> to be fair, I mean, yes, I understand why she feels. <laughs> damn. Okay. Well, damn. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to be a bitch, then. Um, I'm just saying. I whether okay. No offense. Whether it is or isn't her fault, I still don't care. I like. It, I mean, I don't think wasn't... Mifuji cares either. I think she's being too hard on herself. Mifuji's just chilling. Like, oh yeah, no, I can't. I can't fight. And yeah, just like, like, it's my fault. Like, Yo, you're not that important. <laughs> like, I'm very sure, like the whole thing would have fell on killing everybody. Mm. Um, that's not, no, it's not. Yeah, it's not <laughs> completely on her. At least they didn't linger on it. Like, they didn't have a whole episode of her feeling sorry for herself or something. Yeah, been, it, that would have been was, miserable. That would have been, but it was long enough to Oof. the point where I was like, I don't care. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This episode. It was the combination of my new space heater and this episode. I definitely almost just like knocked out. Oh, you're just not giving me a chance. I did like all the little. No, there you know there are episodes that I like. It just this literally was just not it. I feel like this was an episode for people who are invested in the lore of Strike Witches, because there was a lot of cameos and little cutesy things like that. I think the girl from Brave Witches randomly had a cameo where she's like oh i know that woman that's mia fuji from the, 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 the. oh yeah i felt that was a cameo that i just didn't recognize yeah exactly <laughs> and then the tanks i think there's a tank witch division i'm pretty sure they made a reference to them or something so there was like a bunch of little like if you read the light novels and you know the lore and you know the universe <laughs> you would have been like oh this episode was great because it made all these references and stuff and it all comes together but yep, I don't know you, that stuff. And, <laughs> yep, and you'd be wrong either way because that's not what makes the anime good. Wow. So, mm, leave your complaints with Drew. Go ahead. I will ignore them accordingly. <laughs> now, we will move on to our last anime of the night. I believe Attack on Titans Final Season Episode 3. My other anime of the week. That's fair. Yeah. I can't, couldn't, it could not be this. Yeah, it was re- like literally if Golden Komui wasn't just so Golden Komui, mm-hmm. this obviously would have been second place. I mean, second place, it would have been the anime of the week. Poor I'm just trying not to. Yeah. Yeah, just that's what the. Yeah, if, you, if there's ever a way, two words that can sum up this episode perfectly, poor Reiner. <laughs> I feel like this season is just shaping up to be like. The Reiner saga. Why Reiner yeah. is miserable pile of shit. <laughs> I'm just like, holy, I'm just like, holy shit, just kill him. Like, <laughs> just kill him. I mean, he almost succeeded, but. Yeah, he almost killed himself. That was dark. I mean, I'm yeah. glad saying that. Dark. Attack on Titan has always been fucking dark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, would, he would not be the first one to do that, so. Yeah. Not even the first one this season, actually. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they really got introspective. Like, when you actually think about Reiner's situation, like, you really see how, like, all that context we got to, like, oh, he was, you know, basically essentially bullied when he was a cadet. Then he gets the job over the other guy, only to find out he got it because the guy's brother was like, no, I actually wanted to throw you under the bus because I want my brother to die when he's 27. You weren't even recognized by the higher-ups. 
Then he got his friend like, killed. <laughs> the exact friend <laughs> in the same night. Mm-hmm. Then he yeah. had like this whole like, we need to do our mission. We got to complete yeah. the mission. Oh my god, I love how he was like, hey dad, I'm finally on <laughs> oh, yeah, I completely and forgot and about that. Like, get the f- <laughs> yeah, you and I... Yeah, and then his dad was like, mm, go away. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone's gonna know that I'm associated with you. Christ. Jesus, <laughs> like, everything that could possibly go wrong is just, like, went horribly wrong for Reiner. So I kind of see why he's uh, such a mess. Could you imagine going through all of that and then seeing all that happened to him with Attack on Titan? Mm-hmm. I'm like... You know, I can't be mad to you that you had the gun in your mouth. Like, I really can't. Yeah. That's I, a lot. I kind of really want to go back and rewatch it with knowing all this. Con- I think I'm going to do that. After this season, I'm going to go back and rewatch with all this context because it really gives, like, a new uh, lens of, yeah, of how to yeah. see this. Like, now you know all this shit about Reiner. And when you think about it, like, damn, he came back without Annie because she's, I, I don't know. Where Annie. Annie. No, they're all gone. Oh, they all, is she dead? Came back. Is Annie dead or Annie. is she missing? I, um, I think she's... <laughs> If she's dead or miss- I think she's missing. <clears throat> Why weren't she in the cocoon? In the cocoon yeah, like she gone? cocooned herself and they never got her out. So I don't know what happened to her. But so it's either it's still in the cocoon or she's missing. Like, yeah, either way, she's or, not. She didn't yeah. come back. Um, yeah. The jaw titan gone. Uh, Colossal titan gone. Like it's just it was just Ryder who came back with Zeke. So yeah, it kind of fucked everything up. Like, just their whole mission is fucked. Everyone is dead or missing. It's just a mess. Yeah. Yeah, it's really... It's just... It's 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 trash. And then, oh, honey, the way your day is about to get so much worse... Mm-hmm. When I saw the man's eyes lift up and realized who that was i screamed all right so it is aaron right yes okay <laughs> good yeah i'm like this sounds a lot like i recognize from his voice I'm like this sounds like mopey aaron when he fucking complains about <laughs> this sounds like, right. like he was talking like this sounds like some shit aaron would say <laughs> why are you right <laughs> thanks oh so yeah all right cool that's oh my god that's crazy <laughs> yeah, his day's about to get a whole lot worse. Mm-mm. That's just... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Aaron just shows up next episode. He's like, hey, Reiner, remember me? And then Reiner's like, no. And then, they, and, then, and then they have sex. And then he kills Reiner. I'm sure that's somebody's fanfic. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I, just, I feel like they... Because in... Because in the episode, you see how he, he grew a soft spot for Aaron because he's like, oh my god, he reminds me so much of me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the other aspect of it that fucked him up. He actually grew with yep. bonds with all the people that he betrayed. So, like, yep. everything is just fucked in his head. Like, this is the most... Probably one yeah, of the most and, fucked characters mentally I can understand in anime. Yeah, and he's just like... And he gets a wa- and he gets a list in the first count. Like, wait, is that... Wait, what, what's the I'm trying to say? The first, um... Like, when you get to hear from the person... From oh, the first, source. first person account? First hand? I, yeah, first hand account. Mm-hmm. How, like, hey, yeah, that those... <laughs> those Titans who, like, ruined my life forever. Yeah, like, I lost my whole family. Horribly murdered. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. And he literally has to hear this over and over again. And that, you know, as he humanizes these people who are... Well, humans. Yep. He's like, damn, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, sucks to me. I'm glad I'm not Reiner. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. But you know, there was a there's still a part of him that like the brainwashing was deep. Yeah. It's, it's really deep. interesting to see like this conflict of like the brainwashing with reality and like mental turmoil. I'm pretty sure he's gonna. I'm pretty sure Aaron's gonna kill him. And just, like, put him out of his misery. And he's probably going to willingly die to Aaron. Yeah, so I'm like, you know what? Cool, this is fine. I was going to die soon anyways. Yeah. God, I feel bad now. Yeah. The, makes me wonder, how was the Beast Titan? When did he get When did he get his 
Titan and is, I think is he, he like about to die? I think he's about to die. Like he, really. he is because they said that this was like his last mission or his last chance or whatever. Right, he the, he he wants to go back yeah. to the island. Yeah, so he I think he has like a year or two mm-hmm. before he dies. He's a very old looking twenty six or twenty five year old. He looks like he's in his forties, but okay. He does. And you know, he could oh, listen, he can, listen, he can he can uh eat me and become a Titan if you know what I mean. I'm sure that's part of those same fanfics. I wonder how many war <laughs> this must be a lot of war attack on ah, Titan. Ah, <laughs> I'd go there. It must be a war hobbyist fantasy like Probably yeah, the Ew, no. <laughs> Man, Ew. I, wish, I wish Annie would swallow me. Mm. I... <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so, we're gonna end the weekly reviews there, and we're gonna hop into this week's uh, filler arc, which will be last week's filler arc. Um... And this is, this is like a... <laughs> this is a lot less of a discussion, more of a rant. Uh-huh. So, so that's a really interesting article um, by Crunchyroll. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, and it's called Feature. The catchy songs of Novelese are perfect excuse to get into K-pop. I saw that! Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did it trigger you? <laughs> so, I was just like, first, I was just like, hmm, interesting. Only because I... I pop well contrary contrary to uh people's popular nope well how's the phrase like contrary to popular beliefs is that uh, how it goes contrary to popular belief contrary to popular belief thank you mm-hmm. um I don't know every K-pop group that did an anime I feel like a lot of people were like hey dude did you like this song it's by a K-pop group and I'm just like oh, okay sure. Um, but it's cool that we have an article that kind of breaks it down, like, which K-pop groups have been into when, mm-hmm. you know. I think it's cool to give our flowers to the ones that came before, you know, this time. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, everyone now is, like, freaking out, like, oh my god, it's not like this K-pop group! But, you know, this is not the first one, not even remotely so. Um, in the article, they start off with um, TVXQ. Um, that's a, known as Toho Shinki mm-hmm. in Japan. I heard what they're calling in Korea. They're an old group. Um, they they formed in like the two thousands. Um, the members, a lot of members left, and now there's only two left. I think there's like five or six, and now there's like two. Um, excuse me. So what which are, what did they do? They did the they did the rendition of of the song uh, "We Are," mm-hmm. um, as well as the seventeenth ending song of One Piece and the eleventh opening of One Piece. Um, apparently they also did some yokai watch music, which is interesting. Um, so yeah, they, you know, they, they released some music. They done some things. I didn't know TVXQ was making music like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then of course they mention the queen of K-pop herself, Boa. Of course. Um, you know, and they, they open up, well, they talk about the two, uh, the two pieces of art, the two pieces of work she did, which is chorus, what she's m- most well known for is Inuyasha's Every Heart, mm-hmm. uh, the fourth ending. Uh, that's honestly how I actually got into Boa. That's the first Boa song I heard from her. And the opening, um, Masayume Chasing for Oh Fairy Tale. Mm-hmm. I mean, which I heard which opening that is. Opening. A oh, fairy tale in general? Yeah, I think so. That and Rock City Boy probably my two favorites. Oh well, I don't remember any opening that's not Masayume chasing. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so you know she didn't do a whole lot for anime per se, 
but like she, you know, she she gave her little contributions. Um, and then they start talking about more the more recent artists, uh, Stray Kids, who did the opening and ending of Tower of God. Uh, you know, Stray Kids, Stray Kids is pretty well established in the K-pop world already. So I think they debuted in like what 2016, 2017. Mm. Um, oh, 2017. I am not, you know, <laughs> I don't really listen to their music. I didn't listen to the song or two they had. It's cute. Uh, and, you know, if, 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 you, if you're into very cute, talented boys, then definitely go check out their music. Uh, I will say, you know, the, the openings and the endings for Tower of God were good. I think we can both agree to that. Yeah. Really dope, especially the way everyone kind of was like, "Hey, Drew, did you know?" <laughs> like, yeah, mm-hmm. there's a lot of that. Um, let's see, let's see who else. The is there's a group called Tomorrow T- X Together. I don't know who the hell they are. At all. Let me go Google this shit. Okay, tomorrow. Oh, TXT. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I do know it. I do know of TXT. I just didn't know that's what their name stands for. TXT stands for Tomorrow X Together. Kind of cute, I guess. Hmm. Um, let's see. They did an they viewed us airing along with da, 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 da. so they did I think an opening for Black Clover. Um, I think it's Everlasting Shine. I I don't really listen to Black Clover's music like that. I haven't watched I haven't list, I haven't um watched Black Clover in a minute, so I wouldn't know about that. Um, apparently they're very like Tixi is very you know basic bitch like pop music. So, you know, that's, that's cute. Do they have any other songs? I don't think so. They come from the same company, from the same level, label that, uh, deals with, uh, BTS. Same, the yeah, same label that represents BTS. So, I can't imagine they're going anywhere anytime soon. No, probably not. <laughs> Unless BTS just takes all their money away, but... <laughs> Um, and last but not least, a former fan, uh, not former fan, sorry, a former member of TVXQ, the group I mentioned at the beginning, uh, by the name of Jejong, I probably said that, I pronounced that horribly wrong, uh, Korean people, I'm sorry, um, he sings the opening and the ending for Noblis. um, he has um, apparently he's been everywhere. He was a member of TVXQ. He was in the band uh, JYJ, and now he's a solo act. He's experienced. Uh, Those yeah, it's experience. Mm-hmm. I think he has more of a. He's more of the rock pop type of artist. So, and I know a lot of our listeners are into that kind of stuff. So, or that's more geared to what you guys like. So that's. Definitely, I would say check him out if you want. If you want. Um. Oh, actually, he didn't. He only did the opening. the The group that did the ending was actually Oh My Girl, which I actually have to listen to the ending now because I actually want to listen to them. I didn't know it'd be Oh My Girl. Oh My Girl, they're a K-pop girl group. They are also a very basic bitch girl group. Um, I don't mean that in a bad way, by the way. Because I listen to a few of their songs, I'm like, I like it, but I'm just like, you know, I'm keeping it, I'm, I'm keeping it a buck, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, there's nothing super standout-ish. Like, they're very, like, when you think of K-pop, like, yes, you can think of them. So they do the ending. Um, so if you're, if you're looking for, like, yeah, definitely more like a, oh my god, like, cute little pop, you know, oh my god, we're, we're a pop girl group. Definitely check them out. Um, but yeah, so 
I just want to go through that very well, not very quickly, but just go through that whole article. Um, just to say, and ask an important question. Such a question came up during karaoke stream. To mm-hmm. all the people that hate K-pop who watch anime, why? Either way, you don't understand what the fuck they're saying. There's literally the same, literally the same people who have been kind of like, you know, will mock K-pop or make fun of K-pop. We have some were the same people who are like, hey, did you la- hear this anime opening ending by people who are K-pop artists? And I'm just like, I'm just like, I am confusion. <laughs> You can't understand what they're saying either way. 90% of you guys do not understand. And 90 is generous. Probably is 95. Probably is 97. Maybe 95. I'll stop at 95. 90 to 95. I never understood that. Like, it's... Is, is I, and I think it's honestly some kind of psychological association. I think... Well, you say your thought. I'm going to say what I probably... Well, I'm pretty sure I know why, but go ahead. Yeah, I think it's a psychological association. It's literally just like, wow, this thing is paired with the anime. Not, and because you don't know it's by a K-pop group, it's like, at first, you can just remove all that bias. Listen to the song. You enjoy the song. Sometimes you get to K-pop. It's by K-pop people, and you're just like, oh, well, K-pop, it's not, not that bad, I guess. I mean, dot dot dot. I but think I'm it's just more like, of a cult. like I don't. I think when people say they don't like K-pop, they one of two reasons. If they're an anime fan, it's because they don't like. Well, the less likely reasons they don't like the way that K-pop because it does kind of sound samey. Like there's a lot of K-pop that just sounds the same. It's very. It's hard to find very different, and I might just be a product of me not knowing. I language, mean, I mean, but, but like I, I can definitely say the same thing about. Anime. Yeah, you could, but I feel like because they listen to more anime music, they can yeah. point out to more specific examples. But anyway, I think the bigger reason is they're just not a fan of the K-pop, like, culture or fandom. Mm-hmm. You know, like, they just, like, people tend to associate the the medium with the fandom, so they're, they probably have never listened to K-pop. They're like, oh, I hate K-pop because the fans are annoying or their culture of K-pop is annoying. And I'm just like... All y'all saying that, I'm like, y'all never been to 4chan? <laughs> uh, where, K-pop where? K-pop? No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, yes, there are like, K- there's a lot, there are fans of K-pop who are annoying. But then, on the other hand, it's one of those things, it's like, okay, but like, there are people who are in the, in the anime section of 4chan who are, just the way they, that's the conversations I've seen. The very few I've seen, I'm just like, wow. This is a, so the whole trash bin lives here. I don't whole, know why we're taking this wild, crazy right turn from K-pop to 4 No, As, but my point, my point, my <laughs> point is, I'm just like, isn't that? It's like, yeah. I'm just saying we. It's it's same, same. Like as someone <laughs> who likes both, I'm saying it's same. Like I can see that yes, there are annoying, obnoxious K-pop people mm-hmm. and then there are annoying obnoxious anime people so uh, yeah I, I tend to I like, agree. just uh, divorce the fandom from the thing so like yeah there are obnoxious yeah. anime fans I don't care because I if it's an anime I yeah. like I like the anime like like the an- like- exactly exactly I'm not gonna stop not like I'm not gonna stop watching anime because they are dumb people in a- like who like anime like why it doesn't make any sense yeah and there's some um, K-pop songs I like, so I will listen yeah. to K-pop. Yeah, I, I, yeah, all this just to say, guys, like, you know, go, I'm just saying, maybe go check out K-pop, like, if you have some time, go check out a K-pop song, but at least by the, the people that I've mentioned, because it's like, dot, 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 more often than not, they don't deviate too much from, like, the music they make when they make an anime opening. Mm-hmm. Like, Boa's music, that single, it wasn't, like, crazy. She made more, like, uh, ballads as she grew up. Like, she didn't, she didn't say, okay, this is my one song, never again. 
So yeah, definitely, definitely check them out. I'm going to say their names one more time. Also going to put this, you know, article in the description below so you can look. But, you know, you got TVXQ, uh, BOA. Um, oh, I love how in it they mention the fact that, like, Boa's, uh, they mentioned her chart rec, her Oricon chart record. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, ah, uh, yes. They're like, oh, yeah, her, uh, chart record's only her record of six number one albums, only tied by two singers, Ayumi Hamasaki and Utada Hikaru. And I'm like, ah, oh, she's in, she's in great company. Love it. Um, so yeah, Boa, there is Stray Kids, um, TXT. And oh, not and um, J Jong J A E J O O N G, and last but not least, oh my girl. So yeah, just you know, just, that was just my little flight to be like, hey, look at all these songs that you probably enjoy because anime. Maybe listen to some of their music. And also, if you're if you're one of those weird people who's like, I don't want to listen to K-pop because. I don't know, Korean doesn't sound seem like Japanese for some whatever reason. Most of these people, if not all of them, have Japanese music. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap. They, a lot of K-pop artists make Japanese music. So if you want to start there, that's what I did with Boa. I was like, oh, she makes Japanese. Oh, she also makes Korean music. Oh, she's actually Korean. Let me listen to some of her music. So if you're feeling a little mm, pressured, you know, by all means, take a jump. Listen to their Japanese. And if you like what you hear, maybe listen to some K-pop. I don't know. K-pop's good. Go listen to it, y'all. If you want. Cool. Shall I take us away then? Yes, please do. I'm done. Thank you guys so much <laughs> for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of the GNA Podcast, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so you can catch all the episodes as they go up every week. Also, if you haven't already, you join the Party Word Discord. Follow us on Twitch and follow us on Twitter. All linked in the description down below. If you'd like, you can even become a patron like all these lovely people on screen right now and get yourself a bunch of awesome perks like access to our members-only Discord channels, the Midnight Channel and Mementos. And you can join us for the live watches, which, by the way, if you are a member, um, there will be a poll going up soon, probably this week, if not next week. Uh, going over what anime we should watch uh, for the live watches, and I don't know if we're going to do one for what we're going to cover in the next season, because that's kind of a loaded season, but be on the lookout for a poll for the live watch. Other than that, Drew, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, you know what? Don't be like Shiaishi. <laughs> don't, don't just pee everywhere. There, there's a toilet. Use it accordingly. And not on people's faces. Yeah, don't be unless... like R. Kelly. <laughs> not like... Uh, girl, are you trying to get demonetized? <laughs> Listen. Until next time, this has been Sobroni and... <laughs> Jimmy Doo. We'll catch you guys later. Later. Bye.